as Guinea's draft constitution awaits a referendum date, it is already generating public debate because of a clause calling for general amnesty for members of the military junta. There is also a movement by some Guineans to petition junta leader Mamadi Dumbuya to run for president. Faya Milimuno is the leader of the opposition Liberal Bloc Party. He tells me that a general amnesty will be like a blank check to commit crimes without accountability. The latest is that we've been uh, seeing civil society and political actors debating about uh, their project of the new constitution. There are many things that people are asking to be changed and uh, some other things that people are asking to be added to the new constitution. So the debate is going on. And uh, based on the plan that was presented to the people of Guinea since the beginning of the year 2024, we are expecting that referendum to be held this year of 24 by November or December. Is it true that uh, there's a concern that people think that the Constitution as written encourages or asks for amnesty for members of the military junta? Yeah, there is a, a provision in the new Constitution saying that uh, the amnesty law will be rolling and adopted during this uh, period of uh, the transition. So many people have been criticizing that because it's like... Uh, signing a blank check to authorities to kill whoever they want and they're going to get away from it. Another thing that many people have been criticizing is that uh, based on the law, the charter that is uh, governing actually uh, the transitional period, the member of uh, CNRD and the government and also the CNT which is uh, the legislative body of the transition, no one of them was supposed to run for any office by the end of this transition. But based on what we have seen in the new constitution to be in writing, nobody is going to be prevented from running except those who will be under 35, like uh, for the presidency, and over 80 years old. How true is it that there are some Guineans who might be encouraging the military leader Dumuya to run for, say, the presidency? We have been uh, seeing some movement uh, of uh, young people, unemployed, who are trying to find something to rely on, organizing a kind of uh, support for President Dumbuya who encouraging President Dumbuya to run uh, for the presidency at the end of this transition. Even, I think this this Saturday, there is a a communique inviting people to Kalum Hotel in the spirit of uh, the transition to get together and uh, propose something to the junta. Faya Milimuno is the leader of the Liberal Bloc Party of Guinea. He was speaking with us from the Guinean capital, Conakry. Kenya is set to unveil of its former Prime Minister, Raul Dingu, as the country's candidate for the chairmanship of the African Union Commission. Speaking on the sidelines of the ongoing Tokyo International Conference on Africa Development Ministerial Meeting that ended Sunday, Prime Cabinet Secretary Musalia Mudavadi said that after the official launch of Mr. Odinga's candidature by President Ruto, it will be all systems go and nothing will be left to chance to ensure Kenya clinches the seat. The president will not be announcing only to the Kenyan people, but also significantly to the continent and the international community at large, that the official candidate for Kenya in the African Union Commission race is none other than Raila Amoro Odinga, Mudavadi said. 
President Ruto has invited the East African community heads of state to grace his grand unveiling of Mr. Odinga. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs confirmed on Saturday that all the ESC heads of state had been invited to the event, which will mark the official launch of Mr. Odinga's campaigns ahead of the February 2025 elections. The ESC comprises eight states, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Democratic Republic of Congo, Somalia, Burundi, Rwanda, and South Sudan. According to insiders, the launch on Tuesday will see the Kenyan government and Mr. Odinga's secretariat emerged into one unit. There will also be the launch of his campaign website, which was set up by the government to help boost his prospects. Mr. Mudavadi, who is also the Cabinet Secretary for Foreign and Diaspora Affairs, noted that the campaigns will be led by highly experienced and acknowledgeable individuals to ensure a well-coordinated, targeted, and result-oriented output. Dr. Ruto is expected to name the team of strategists who will work jointly with Mr. Odinga's team in the Joint Secretariat to intensify regional campaigns and shuttle diplomacy to secure the AUC post. Mr. Odinga had already named his team, which is composed of experienced diplomats, including former Intergovernmental Authority on Development IGAD Executive Secretary Mahbub Marim, former Kenyan Ambassador to the United States, Elkana Odembo, Ambassador, uh, Ambassador Anthony Okora, as well as Professor Makawu Mutua and former Nyeri Deputy Governor Dr. Karurin Karugu. While in Trocho, Mr. Mudavadi used the opportunity to rally several foreign affairs ministers from the African Union member states attending the conference to support Kenya's bid. There are over 25 ministers for foreign affairs representing their countries in this conference, and we have spent a lot of time talking and persuading them as we target to harness more support and lobby aggressively to the Kenyan candidate. Mr. Mudavadi said.